Prime Minister Rudd, it's great to have you on because uh, over the weekend we learned, or at least it was reported, that the U.S. had imposed export restrictions on any companies that are looking to sell goods to Chinese semiconductor giant SMIC. TikTok, that's people dancing on video. SMIC, multi-billion dollar corporation. What do you make of this move, if true? Because it does seem like yet another economic escalation. I cannot confirm the accuracy of this most recent report, but what we have seen uh, in the um, political entrails in Washington over recent weeks and months is a slow and steady drumbeat uh, from the administration about rolling out a series of new restrictions and possible bans concerning the export of American semiconductors uh, to China in a range of categories. Obviously, firstly, those uh, which are directly relevant to the artificial intelligence sector, but now potentially in other sectors for other applications as well. Where this stops, I'm not sure, but I'm certain the US semiconductor industry, which, is, which depends so much on the Chinese export market for its own revenues, will be concerned by this most recent development. Well, here's, here's what's fascinating, uh, Prime Minister, and, and, you're, and your home country is sort of stuck right in the middle of it because it appears like we are going to two global economies, right? As we know, you know, we're talking about banning TikTok here. You can't use American social media in China. You can't use Google. Most of Microsoft Office is, software is, is pirated. It appears that we are going toward two economies, the China-based economy and maybe the Western economy, and they may not even connect only through commodities and hard goods. How does this play out in 10, 50 years, Kevin? Well, I think you're right to point to the trend. We've been seminaring about this thing called the splinter net for quite some time. Guess what? It's starting to look like a reality. And you've just pointed to the trend lines there. So what does it mean? Well, the United States being an open economy and uh, having uh, established open economic trade, investment, financial relationships across the world will have an extensive global network upon which it can rely. However, China now is developing the Belt and Road Initiative countries. And there's some 75 of them. And they're not all uh, developing countries in Africa and Asia and parts of Latin America. There are some in Eastern Europe and some now in Western Europe. And so the fault lines will not just be China v the rest, but let's call it the, um, the uh, China-centric uh, economy um, around, let's call it, wider East Asia, across Eurasia and into Europe. What does it mean? Well, I think we've got to start thinking about uh, what I have described earlier in my own writings as Cold War 1.5. Not 2.0, but 1.5. And that is we're going to see a splitting off in certain areas of economic engagement, but not a complete splitting off, at least at this stage. Yeah, and, and we, you wonder sort of how it all plays out because through that Belt and Road Initiative, obviously China you know, literally has, in some cases, a literal pipeline for oil or gas with Russia, obviously, and then a figurative one through shipping through parts of Africa for the raw materials that we need with your country as well. I mean, raw minerals, rare earth minerals, all the stuff you need to build the next generation of electric cars and batteries right now does appear to be mostly controlled. About 85% of the world's supply is coming from China. Is there any policy response outside of just outright bans that might work here in making sure the rest of the world has access to some of these minerals that we all need to do what we want? Well, the bottom line is I see a lot of policy coming out of Washington at the moment. I'm not sure what the strategy is. That is in terms of what behavioral changes the United States is seeking to engineer on China's part and what parallel measures are being put in place to protect US core economic interests and those of its friends and allies around the world. You've just mentioned rare earths. On the rare earths question, my own country, Australia, as you know, is a significant repository for a whole range of rare earths. And I'm sure uh, the Australian economy through the companies which operate in that sector will continue to supply across the world through an open and free market. But more generally, we seem to be catapulting in the direction towards a level of bifurcation of the global economy, 
partly in trade, certainly it's already yeah. unfolding in foreign direct investment and in tech, but still no rules for the road.